Hello and welcome. We are here today for a special interview with the new OCMC Missionary Director, Father Rob Spaliatzos. Father Rob Spaliatzos joined the Orthodox Christian Mission Center, OCMC, earlier this year as the new Missionary Director. In his role, Father Rob is responsible for all aspects of the missionary program, including recruiting, training, and supporting OCMC missionaries as they prepare to enter the mission field and while working in their respective areas. Before joining OCMC, Father Rob served as a parish priest in an, at Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church in Missoula, Montana for almost 10 years. He holds master's degrees in education and social work, as well as a master's of divinity from Holy Cross Greek Orthodox School of Theology. Father Rob experienced mission work himself as a student when he traveled to Albania in 2010 as part of a seminary class on missions and evangelism. Father Rob, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. It's nice to be with you, Noel. So getting right into the questions, missionaries are the lifeblood of OCMC, and recruiting new missionaries is, as I understand, your primary focus. How are you going to recruit new participants in your role as the missionary director? Thank God. Well, missionaries are a huge part of OCMC, and uh, I like the idea that they're the lifeblood, but I would also say that the lifeblood of OCMC is the church, and the church supports all of the ministries that OCMC is able to share in the world. So when we think about uh, OCMC sending missionaries, those missionaries are coming from the church. When we think about the funds that are used to send those missionaries, those funds are coming from the church. And we think about all the people who are praying for the missionaries that we're sending into the world, those prayers are being lifted up by the church. So I would say that the lifeblood of OCMC is really the church in North America. All of the parishes that uh, are cultivating missionaries, planting the seeds of, of mission service in, in people's hearts, and then supporting them and praying for them. Uh, and so, yes, a big part of OCMC are the people we send out, but a big part of OCMC, OCMC is the church in North America that makes it all possible. Uh, so, yeah, so my role at OCMC is just as you said, recruiting, training, supporting both while missionaries are in the field, but also supporting missionaries when they come home on furlough, when they're visiting family, they're traveling and, and visiting parishes, sharing the work that they're doing, and then also supporting missionaries when they come back uh, after their period of service and they're getting resettled here in the States. Um, so that is uh, a big need right now. Uh, the pandemic uh, definitely impacted our recruiting efforts. And so uh, OCMC finds itself at a, at a really important time of, of our history of needing to share that invitation, uh, to share the invitation to the church as a whole to pray for missionaries to step up, to support those missionaries, and for some people, uh, the invitation to go and to serve in the mission field as long-term missionaries. Let me ask a follow-up to that, Father Rob. Is there anything in your mind that parishes can do to um, to cultivate those missionaries or to, to encourage people in their parishes? Absolutely. It's a, it's a big part of our, our recruiting strategy that we're, we're just starting to put into place, which is to really try and connect missionaries in the field, as well as missionaries who are coming home on furlough to the parishes across the country. Uh, OCMC just recently did a marketing analysis. And one of the statistics that I was really surprised by, uh, and I hope this is surprising to, to all of the viewers, is that 70% of parishes in North America have very limited to little, uh, to, to no engagement with OCMC and its ministries. So what that means is there's a tremendous opportunity for us as OCMC to connect with those parishes, to have our missionaries perhaps join a, a coffee hour. Recently here in Missoula, where I've served as a parish priest for, for many years, we had the McDonald family from Albania, uh, Jeffrey McDonald, Dr. Jeffrey McDonald is a professor at Shinblesh uh, Seminary. We had him as a part of our coffee hour. We set up a, a little video projector, introduced him and the work that he's doing, and then allowed him to share his missionary experience with our parish here in Missoula. Um, I'm very hopeful that those parishes that aren't yet engaged with OCMC would be willing to either have a missionary on furlough come and visit their parish to share stories, to help, uh, again, invite that experience of supporting missions by our parishes, uh, but also to plant those seeds in the hearts of people who are considering, or maybe have never considered mission service, but just need to be invited. 
Uh, so again, those 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 opportunities. No one can recruit a missionary like a missionary. And so having having those contacts in the field or when missionaries are on home or home for, on furlough, those are really uh, special opportunities for parish engagement. So I understand that you recently visited Guatemala to get an update on the construction of a seminary that will hopefully open later this year. Can you tell us about the focus of this particular seminary and what you expect to come out of this project? Yeah, thank God. So this is a, an important uh, opportunity to talk about how OCMC has developed over the last several decades. Uh, oftentimes when we think about OCMC, we perhaps think about people, missionaries, going from parishes here in the United States uh, to places overseas to bring their talents and their skills to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with places that have yet to encounter it. And that continues to be an important part of what we do at OCMC. Over the last decade or so, OCMC has also developed another focus of supporting the growth of churches overseas. And so we're thinking now about OCMC as sort of two lungs that breathe together. One of those lungs is about bringing people into the mission field. And the other lung is about supporting the growth of ministries and, and projects that help to bring about a self-sustaining church in countries across the world. So the projects lung, if you will, of OCMC uh, has helped to be a part of this construction of a seminary in Guatemala. So on the trip to Guatemala was myself, uh, but also Father Martin Ritzi and also Santi Luizos. And Santi's role is to oversee the projects part of OCMC. So she was going to look at the construction of this new seminary. I was going to meet the seminary, or excuse me, to meet the missionaries that are there supporting the seminarians who are learning uh, at the seminary. And so it was an exciting sort of collaborative uh, effort of, of Santi and I going with Father Martin to see the construction, but also to hear what are the, the, the talents and the skills that are needed so that we can send people to continue to help with the growth of the seminary, uh, to train future priests, but also to train catechists. And so that's a part of, of this uh, formation center or seminary is that it will not only be for the purpose of training priests, but also bringing people from villages around Huehuetenango, the, the, one of the, the biggest, it's the second largest city in Guatemala, bringing people from villages to come to spend time at the formation center and to be trained as catechists so that they can go back to their village and help to continue uh, to share orthodoxy with people in their community. So in terms of construction, it's progressing beautifully. It's an exciting thing to see this building uh, continue to be built. Uh, we're hopeful that uh, completion of the building will be within the next year. Uh, but uh, again, right now we were excited to see the progress that they've already made. Uh, and, and we look forward to the seminarians who are already there being able to utilize the building, but also the ability to expand the seminarian program to house more seminarians in the future. So you are a missionary yourself uh, in Albania. How does that experience inform your current role? So it's really important for me to make clear that I was a part of a short-term mission team. And so as a short-term mission participant, I went to Albania uh, as a part of a, a group of seminarians going. It was a, a two-week trip. And really what we were doing is we were encountering the work of the long-term missionaries along with the local clergy, and of course, one of the greatest missiologists in the history of our church, uh, Archbishop Anastasios. So we were able to go and see the progress of resurrection that the church has been experiencing in Albania since the fall of communism. And really that trip was a team's trip that was intended to help cultivate and to create awareness of the importance of missions for our Orthodox Church today. So without a doubt, it was instrumental and my desire to continue to support OCMC after graduation and through my time as a parish priest and now working as the missionary director. I'll just share a quick little story. Uh, I took a class with Father Luke Veronis that, that culminated in this trip to Albania. He led the trip. And one of the things that he was so clear about is that the Great Commission go and baptize all nations, teaching them all that I've commanded you. This is what Christ tells us. This great commission is one of the commands of Christ that we're all given. Just like we're all told 
to love our enemies and, and to forgive those who hurt us. Uh, this is a command that Christ gives all of us in the church to share the gospel with all nations. Uh, one of the things that Father Luke said very clearly was that our parishes can be involved in this, even if they're not sending missionaries. They can be involved in those other two things that I mentioned, praying for missions and supporting missionaries uh, financially. And I remember Father Luke sharing the story that when he was a, uh, a younger priest uh, and moving into the parish where he's at uh, in Massachusetts, uh, he, he said, it's important for us to support missions overseas, missions domestically, and here in our own little community. And there was a bit of pushback. You know, how is it, Father Luke, we're going to send thousands of dollars overseas when we might be struggling here financially? And what he said is this is important because it allows us to live out this commandment. So as a young priest, when I came here to Missoula 10 years ago, as, as the first full-time priest in a number of years, I remembered the words of Father Luke. And I said to my parish council, it's important for us to have a line item in our budget to support OCMC, to pick a missionary family that we want to support, and also to support the growth of orthodoxy here in our home state of Montana, as well as our local community. Um, so again, uh, that connection to Father Luke, that awareness of how important missions are, uh, the importance of we as a, a, as a North American church to participate in missions, um, it, it's been a huge part of my desire to continue to serve uh, missionaries uh, as the OCMC missionary director, as well as to create awareness for uh, churches to support missionaries as well. So I want to remind viewers at this point that we do have a few previous interviews we've done with uh, current missionaries and past missionaries. So definitely check that out. We have an interview with Hannah Valentine, who's currently in Albania, and we will have more OCMC missionary interviews coming up. So definitely look into those if you're interested in hearing more of those stories. But um, Father Rob, I'll ask you, what would you say to someone who is potentially considering missionary work or some type of involvement with OCMC's mission? Thank God. I would say explore that desire. And I would also say to the person who's never even thought about missionary service, if you're hearing this interview and you have even a small little thought, could this be something that I could do? The answer is we all have talents and gifts that are useful in sharing the gospel message of Jesus Christ. So if you're interested at all, please uh, reach out to OCMC, start a dialogue with us. As I said, we are at a, at a place right now that because of the pandemic, We've had a no number of our missionaries come home, and we haven't been able to train missionaries, to recruit and train missionaries to take their place. So there's a tremendous opportunity to step up and to continue the beautiful work that, OC that OCMC is doing uh, across the globe. Uh, we're, we're continuing to try and find new places also that need missionaries. So if you're considering it at all, pray about it. Uh, perhaps watch some of those interviews that Noel mentioned, continue to uh, hear about the work that OCMC is doing, and then continue to pray and to have conversations with us about how you also might be able to serve. It truly is a, an exciting uh, thing to come back from Guatemala and to see the missionaries that are there having such an impact, but also seeing the local clergy and the local people excited to continue to grow themselves into these positions of leadership so that they can have a sustained church that uh, grows continually without missionaries in the future. And again, that's an important part of our work at OCMC as well. And what's the best way for people or parishes to connect with OCMC? The best way, and, and I'm going to speak particularly to parishes because you mentioned that, if you would like to have a missionary visit your parish, and I hope you do, uh, again, we have a number of our missionaries who will be home this summer on furlough. And what that means, again, is that they're coming home to connect with family and friends and to rest, but they also spend a good portion of that time visiting the parishes that support them, as well as trying to connect with new parishes to share how important missions uh, opportunities are. So if you're interested in having a missionary join you at your parish to make a presentation, uh, you can contact us uh, at uh, ocmc.org is our, our website. My email is fatherrob, F-R-R-O-B, at ocmc.org. And our phone number is on the website as well. We would love to have a missionary connect to your parish. We would love to share some information. Thank you so much for joining us, Father Rob. I know that we here at OCN will be praying for you, and I hope that our viewers will as well. Thank you with your prayers. I'll, I'll just also share this is a, a small little tidbit. And uh, 
Today is the completion of my second month as the missionary director. And today on March 31st, we celebrate as we're doing this interview, thank God through his intercessions, uh, we celebrate the feast of St. Innocent of Alaska, one of the great missionary saints uh, in our North American history. And so may his example, if you don't know about St. Innocent, Innocent, please read about him. And may his example of bringing the love and light of Jesus Christ and inspire you to support missions through your prayers, through your generosity, and for those who are called to actually go into the field. So thank you, Noel. God bless you. And, and again, blessed feast of St. Innocent. Thank you so much.